I am Groot. I am I, I am Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> I am Groot. Oh. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your Everyday Nerd B-Sides Editions. I'm your host, Zach Snyder. And on the B-Sides, take a look at anything and everything in the same format as your Everyday Nerd. They're just shorter, unsponsored episodes. As we continue our road to Endgame, I think it's fair to say that out of all the films in the MCU, Guardians of the Galaxy was the biggest risk that they could take, especially towards the beginning. Much like most people, I knew absolutely nothing about the Guardians until this film came out. And even then, it took me a couple of years before I actually had the chance to see it. Fast forward a few years, and I've seen it three times now. I actually saw it twice just this past week, so I feel like I can take a really thorough look at Guardians of the Galaxy. So here we are. A thief, two thugs, an assassin, and a maniac. For those of you that don't know anything about it, 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy is the 10th film in the MCU and was directed by James Gunn. While the two previous Thor films had expanded the universe a bit, including Asgard and a couple of other worlds, and the Avengers had produced the Chitauri and Thanos, it was this film that really shed a light on just how big the Marvel Cinematic Universe is. To give a good enough summary of Guardians of the Galaxy for me to explain to you exactly what this film does, it would take a very long time. So instead, here's like a bulletproof brief list of everything this film does on both a standalone film and a film inside the MCU. Meet Peter Quill, who is also known as Star-Lord, who was abducted from Earth at a young age by a group called the Ravengers. We got the introduction of the rest of the Guardians, who start out as a group of individuals that are arrested together. They end up fighting with each other and eventually they become friends by the end of the movie. There's Rocket Raccoon, a talking raccoon, Groot, a tree-like creature that only says the words I and am and Groot respectively. We also have Gamora, a daughter of Thanos, and her sister Nebula. They're important, especially much later on in the MCU. We get Drax, who wants revenge for the death of his wife and daughter. And finally, the big villain of the film, besides Thanos, which we'll talk about in a bit, there's Ronan the Accuser, a member of the Kree race who wants the Power Stone, one of the six Infinity Stones in the universe, to do something with, we're just not quite sure what exactly. And that's the tip of the iceberg when it comes to this film. Like I said, Guardians of the Galaxy is extremely important to the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it shows. Here we have the introduction to the six Infinity Stones. We have Thanos actually in a movie, who will later take possession of these stones. Gamora and Nebula, both daughters of Thanos, are extremely important to his backstory. We also get to see the Collector again, who was briefly shown in Thor The Dark World. There's a lot to this film that expands this universe, and it's really awesome. It's one of the reasons why I love it, but I still have some issues with it. In some ways, this film feels a bit too overstuffed, not unlike Iron Man 2. It's got so much going on that we barely have time to breathe and it takes almost a couple of watches before you really know everything that has to say about the universe. This is almost like doing the homework of the MCU. What's the Infinity Stones? Who is Thanos? Which stones are where and why does somebody want them and what are they going to do with them when they get them? For anybody who went into this movie with no prior knowledge of the comics, it makes for a lot of information just kind of thrown at you. Unfortunately, that means a lot of exposition dumps. Multiple times throughout the film, we get one of the most irritating tropes in movies, what I like to call the backstory conversation. Let me, let me, let me explain. Zach, I'm so irritated with you and you, well, you should know this because remember that time when we were fighting, you stole my computer from me and then I hit you with a baseball bat? Well, Zach, here's the thing. I, I completely remember when I stole your computer and you hit me with a baseball bat, but like also... You stole my Cheez-Its that morning. What was up with that? I only did that because I was hungry. Don't you remember? I'm always hungry at exactly 10, 11 a.m. You should know that by now. Well, here's the thing. You're always rubbing that in my face about being hungry at 10, 11 a.m. and wanting my cheese. It, that was dumb, but you get my point. There's multiple times where Drax is talking to somebody else and he's like, remember when you killed my wife and daughter, Ronan? Or when Gamora and Nebula are fighting and Gamora's like, you always, you're always fighting me. And Nebula's like, you're always fighting. Like, it's just a tired trope. It's annoying. And it happens so much. 
And unfortunately, I don't know what else they could have done here because we have all of these characters, all these main characters that are meeting for the first time that we're seeing for the first time. And instead of introducing a couple of them here, a couple of them there, like they did with the Avengers, because remember, like before the Avengers met, we got the Thor movie, we got the Captain America movie, we got the Iron Man movie. When it comes to the Guardians of the Galaxy characters, it would be tired and annoying to get a Drax movie or to get a Gamora and Nebula. That might, that might work. Or getting a Peter Quill movie. That also might work. But all of these characters could not have their own individual movies to make up this ensemble. There's a reason why these dialogue choices have to happen. I completely understand it. Fortunately, a good bit of them are funny, so that makes it a little bit better. It's just a trope that I wish could be done better. On the other side of things, I still love this movie and here's why. Guardians of the Galaxy is first and foremost a space adventure comedy. We get so many different locations throughout the entire universe and it makes the film exciting to watch over and over again. The comedy is great. James Gunn's writing and direction is one of the reasons why I love this film and why I keep going back to it and Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I love Rocket and his character arc, which almost exists through Endgame, which is really cool. We've now had Groot in three different forms, and I really do like the original grittier Groot, who's willing to stab a few men and throw them around a room. We have the Peter and Gamora relationship, which is one of the better ones in the MCU. There's also Drax, who is mostly a comedic character, and I, I really do love his humor throughout both of the Guardians films. But the character arc dealing with revenge is also pretty great. So if there's one thing that this movie does exceptionally well, it's the comedy and its characters. Again, I do have an issue with it being overstuffed. There's the dialogue issue, which bothers me a decent amount. But the thing that bothers me the most is the antagonist department. This movie has about a thousand and one antagonists, and it's kind of hard to keep up with. There's the Nova Corps, who I really don't care for, but they do play a part in the, the plot a good bit. There's also Yondu and the Ravengers who are important again, but I end up liking them more in the second film. We have Thanos who, while I love him being in the film, is really just not great in this one. Not only has he improved with the CGI and the voice acting, all of that in Infinity War, but his motivations aren't extremely clear here and we really don't get much from him that I enjoy. But we also get the biggest villain in this film, which ironically isn't Thanos, it's Ronan the Accuser. And I'll be frank with you, I don't like Ronan at all. I think he's right there alongside Malekith and Thor the Dark World. This dude just wants one of the Infinity Stones so he can be really powerful. Ronan's just a boring to bad villain at best and that, that really did bring the film down a little bit for me. And that's why mostly Guardians of the Galaxy is a fun and entertaining film with a couple of major flaws. If Ronan was better or just didn't exist, I think the film would be even better. If it wasn't so bloated, we wouldn't have so many exposition dumps and it would have been even better. And something I didn't talk about with it being a film primarily in space, I would have loved to see a bit more style. Fortunately, they crank out the style in Guardians too. I love the characters, I love the comedy, I love the use of the 80s soundtrack, but these are other reasons that I end up liking Guardians 2 even more. We'll talk about that soon enough. If you've never seen Guardians of the Galaxy, I, I do think it's worth watching. Don't worry about trying to understand all of the Infinity Stones or the cosmic shit that they talk about. You basically learn about all that later on in Infinity War anyways. Can't pick up everything, it's fine. As a standalone film, I could see myself potentially watching this more again in the future. But I'll more than likely only watch it within the context of the MCU. If you're rewatching everything for Endgame, I'd say go ahead and rewatch it. It is definitely one of the better MCU films in Phase 1 and 2. And it's also pretty important, like I said, to all the cosmic stuff. But if you decided to skip it, I don't think it would be the end of the world. But anyways, that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead that like button. If for the reason you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts on Guardians of the Galaxy 1 are. I'm very interested in hearing what you guys have to say. We have more Phase 2 films. We're almost done. We got one more. And then we're right into Phase 3. Endgame is right around the corner. I've already seen it. It's super dope. I still got to write my review on that so I can really get my thoughts into it. Uh, and if you enjoy the show, go ahead and subscribe button. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.